Karen from the Huntley Library. Thanks for joining me for today's Teen Crafter Noon. Today we're going to be painting and collaging. We're going to be making fall uh, birch trees out of collage and paint. They look like this. So we're going to gather some supplies together and then we can get started on our projects. Hi everyone. Um, today we're going to be making a fall birch collage and I'm just going to show you some of the supplies that you can use to get started. Um, I did an example here on a piece of stretch canvas, so this has like a, a board in the background. And then I did my collage on top of that. Um, there's also a canvas board. This is kind of a large piece. <laughs> so if you have something like this sitting around at home, you could get, you can use that, um, whatever size you want to use. Uh, this just Keep in mind that if you use a large piece like this, you're going to have a lot um, more area to cover. Um, if you have a piece of cardboard, that would work too. You can attach your collage materials and paint over that. So those are some suggestions. Uh, you're also going to need some papers for your birch trees. So I'm going to get this out of the way because it's still a little wet. So I've got some book pages. Uh, some sheet music, and I also cut out some newspaper uh, pages too to make my background and my birch trees. So have something like that on hand. Um, I'm sticking with black and white because birch trees are black and white, so I would veer away from color for that part of it. Um, and for your paint accents, um, I used a sort of light blue, a lighter green, an orange, a gold, or some kind of yellow would work well. Um, these would be for like the tree leaves. This is for the sky. Um, and then I also have black and white paint to do the accents on the birch trees. And then you're of course going to need some paint brushes. Um, I have a finer one for sort of uh, closer detail and then two sort of medium brushes for um, putting on the background elements that I can use to cover area more quickly and then also uh, a cup with some water in it so I can rinse those out. Um, for a lot of these painting elements we're going to do kind of washes so the water is helpful for that too so that you're not laying on real thick coats of paint and you might want to have some paper towels or napkins or something of that nature so you can dry off your brushes um, so they carry the amount of paint that you want them to. And as always, protect your surface. I've got my little cardboard here that I, you can see I've painted on quite a bit. Um, so have something to protect your surface before you get started. And then at the end, once it's all dry, um, you will probably want to use something like Mod Podge um, to coat over it just to protect everything and keep it in place. And you might want to use Mod Podge to lay down some of your collage elements too. Um, you can also use glue or um, there's a painting acrylic painting medium that you can use which will do the same thing and if you want to just use I think the medium is probably the best part um, some kind of acrylic paint to lay it down that also works as well so let's gather those things together and then we can get started okay this is the painting medium that I was talking about which is just a um, acrylic medium that you can use and this is matte so it's not going to be shiny and this is what I am going to be using to lay down my uh, paper on my collage for my collage and I decided I'm going to try and use this um, cardboard because it's way smaller than that <laughs> canvas board that I showed you earlier so it's a little bit more manageable and you'll be able to see it better since it's not as big so I have all of this newspaper and you can, when you're um, getting your background and your birch trees together, you can cut strips of newspaper, you can tear strips of newspaper, you can tear panels of newspaper, um, you can assemble your birch trees on another piece of paper and then cut them out so that they're all ready to go. Uh, right now I'm just going to create a background on here and if you don't like the idea of print for both of your trees and your background. Um, you could just paint the background right onto the, uh, the canvas or whatever you're using. Uh, and then put the trees, the collaged trees over that. And then you'll have a plainer background. Um, I kind of like the effect of, of words in the background, so I'm going to uh, lay some of this out. 
And then it could look like it was, you know, sort of trees in the background as well. So lots of words here. Um, some of these narrow ones might make good birch trees, so I'm going to save those for later uh, when I do the tree part. But for the background, I just have lots of, of words. And you can make these fit in whatever way you want. You can leave a little border on the edges if you want. I just like to have an idea of how much space I need to cover before I put things down more permanently. Okay, so that looks like I've got pretty good coverage there. So I'm going to put a little bit of this medium, after I shake it up, in a bowl so I have easy access to that. It looks like glue or Mod Podge, if you've used, I'm sure if you've used glue before. If you haven't used Mod Podge, that's kind of what it looks like. And I got a, a larger brush for laying all of that down. And you could just paint right over on top of it. Just make sure that it soaks all the way through. So hold it down so that things don't move around too much. And you can have a kind of wet brush for this part um, just because you do really want it to soak through and stick. And if it's not sticking this way, you can always paint underneath it first and then um, paint on top of it as well with your medium or glue. Now you probably are going to get some um, relief here. <laughs> and by relief I mean that things are going to be a little bit bumpy and wrinkly and whatnot as they get wet from the medium. And I don't mind that. I think the texture is kind of cool. So just be aware that you're going to have some texture going on here. If you don't like that, you might try after it's... Yeah, I don't know what to do about it when it's dry. If you can put something on top of it to kind of flatten it out, that might help. But it's going to stick to things right now, so you'll have to protect it in some way to keep it from sticking to whatever else is holding it down. This part's kind of like paper mache. Um, maybe a drawback of using the cardboard is that it's slightly absorbent, so um, some of that moisture is going to just go right into the cardboard and not hold the paper down. So I am going to lift things up here and stick them down. The canvas will be less porous, so if you're using that, you probably will not have this issue. You can see some of those wrinkles forming. Maybe putting it on the back again. If you're using stretched canvas and you have um, those extra sides, you can paint the sides too, uh, the edges, I guess, because that can look nice. And you can follow whatever um, is going on on the front of your piece, or you can just paint them uh, whatever color you want, just around the edges. I think I did mine in blue on the example that I made that matched the sky in the background of my birch tree collage. Oop, that sticks pretty well now. So this is going to take a little while to dry. So while this is drying, you could be creating your birch trees, cutting them out, 
um, and you could assemble them, like I said, on another uh, piece of paper if you wanted to, and then cut them out and they'll just be ready to uh, paste down all in one piece. Or you can assemble, cut out just the various pieces that you're going to need and just wait to put them all on here. That's another possibility. We're almost through it. See, this would have taken like two hours if I used the big piece of canvas. <laughs> And if you, um, if you have a piece of canvas from some other project that you made that you are now finished with, you can just paint over that, or you can collage right over what's underneath and reuse canvases that way. Make sure that it's something you're not going to want to see again. <laughs> you don't want to destroy it. If you're not ready to let it go. All right, so things are pleasantly lumpy here. <laughs> I'll just put one more coat on anywhere that it looks like it might be a little dry so that it gets tacked down nicely. And then we can move on to making our trees. Be sure that you clean off your paintbrush um, in between things, and especially now while it's resting and you're not going to be using it so that it's ready to go for the next step and does not get destroyed by having dried paint or acrylic medium on it. So the easiest way I found to make our trees, our birch trees, is to just cut them out um, in the tree shape and then you don't have to worry about um, cutting out separate little branches and gluing those on later on. So if you want trees without branches you can just cut them um, straight out like that or if you want trees with branches, you can incorporate those into your design as you're cutting. So um, if you need <laughs> reference art, look up birch trees and then see what you find um, with an image search. Or if you have some in your yard, you can take a look at those and see how they grow. Um, birch trees are kind of skinny usually, especially the young ones. Uh, but we'll give them some, some shape. And then add a little branch down here and if they end up not fitting exactly your piece you can trim things off later on um, before you glue them down or after you glue them down you can trim off the top or the bottom if they hang over so you have them placed where you want them to be so there's a little tree and then to make some of the stripes that are on them you can use other um, uh, newspaper print or whatever you have, old book pages, and you can make little knots if you have like images that you want to throw in there too. And if those hang off the side, um, once they're glued on, you can trim the whole thing again and make sure that it looks nice and neat. Oh, public notice. All right, so that's how we're going to make our trees. And I'll, um, you can glue these on beforehand if you want to. But I'm going to wait for my canvas, my cardboard to dry, and then I'll put the trees on top of that. Okay, I'm ready with my trees. So here, they're still drying a little bit since I'm going to glue them down anyway. Um, I don't need them to be completely dry. And my background canvas is also just the tiniest bit damp. But we're going to work with that and then let it dry completely before we paint. All right, so you may have more trees than are necessary. Take a look and sort of place them like we did before with the background pieces and see where you like them. And you can have them be slanted if you want to. They don't all have to be standing up completely straight. Things happen in the forest. Um, you can have branches overlapping. Let's see. Let's put this one this way. 
maybe, maybe a little more. And then once you're happy with how everything looks, you can glue them down like we did before. And don't worry if they blend into the background right now. Um, we'll be coming back with some white paint to make them stand out a little bit better. All right. So same thing as we did before. I'm using that acrylic medium to glue everything down. I'm going to add a little bit more in here. And you can do the same. Let me get my brush ready. I'm going to paint the backs of these. Or you can just paint the background air canvas to get them to stick there. And uh, I think I said before, if the pieces are going over the top or the bottom, or um, you can trim those later on once they're glued on here. And then you'll want to paint over the tops of them too to really get them stuck to your canvas. So I'll let you do the same and then we'll let this all dry and then start uh, painting. This is what it looks like with everything glued down, still drying, but I think it's, I'm going to get a little sticky. <laughs> I think we can cut off the extra pieces. You could also fold them over the back too so they don't stick out like this if you don't want to cut them off. All right. And then we just have to wait for this part to dry. Dry. If you want to accelerate that, you could use um, a fan or a hair dryer. Just don't have it on high heat. All right, we're ready to paint. Um, I'm going to put in a blue background or a blue sky background. I've got a little bit of white on my brush already, so add that and grab a little bit of blue from the side. And then just fill in some of these places where we have gaps between the trees. You could also choose to have done your background before you put the trees on, but I figure I'm going to use a little bit less paint this way. Um, and you don't, you can go all the way down to the bottom, but you don't have to. You could make that part green, or um, when we fill in with leaves, we're going to be sort of dabbing some green on there too. So. You can leave that bottom space for later if you want to, or we can paint over it if you want to go blue all the way down. Oops, grab a little bit more white. I have very little white left in the white paint bottle, so I'm just going to try and use all of that up. Where are my trees? <laughs> this is the part where you have to be careful and distinguish your trees from the background here if they look a lot, if they're about the same color. Some of mine are very similar. And add more white or more blue to your preference, depending on how dark or light you want this to be. I like it to be a little bit, I like a little variation in color, so. I'm happy with it being different blues. Um, and if it just keeps blending and you want it to be darker or lighter, you can um, wait until it dries and then go over it with a shade that you like better. I 
All right, so that shows you where all my trees are. Ooh, it's hard to tell sometimes. <laughs> okay, so you can clean your brush off and um, let that dry a little bit. So for the leaves, I'll show you my example. I just painted leaves on. Um, if you are happy with your, if you're going with your collage vibe and you want to cut little leaves out, you could cut out uh, yellow and orange leaves and paste those on too instead of painting them on. I'm kind of done with the collage part, so I'm going to paint mine. So I have gold and orange paint, and I don't have a lot of either of them, so I don't think they're going to squeeze out very well. So I'm just going to use the containers like I did with the white, and I'll do one color at a time. And I'm switching to a thinner brush here so that I can get a little bit more detailed. And then the leaves are going to be um, by the branches. If your paint is a little wet, be careful because they might try and mix with your blue, which is okay because then you can have some green leaves too. And birch, these birch leaves have sort of a flatter bottom and a pointier top. I'm kind of laying the paint on pretty thick here, so if you've got thick paint, it's just going to take longer to dry. If your paint isn't showing up the way you'd like, you can add a little bit more paint over it and do multiple layers. Or you can add some white to it to increase the opacity. Feel free to paint on top of your other trees. I think I'm getting more paint on my fingers than I am on here. And you can also add some leaves where there aren't any visible branches, like maybe there's something back here that we can't really see from the other side because something's blocking it. So you can just add some leaves there. And so on and so forth. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep adding some leaves here, and then I will show you what it looks like when it's all finished. All right, so those are my yellow leaves, and if I decide later on that I want more yellow leaves, I can add some additional ones. So I'm going to start on the orange ones now. And um, this is also to your taste, so decide where you want those to be how many you want to be. And paint lots of leaves. Or perhaps it's late in the season and your trees have lost all of their leaves, in which case, skip this step. <laughs> Alright, I will come back when I've finished my orange leaves. Okay, so I got my orange leaves painted now too. And uh, now we can start it. Now we can start to do the accents on the trees. So, in my example, which I have here, you can see that I added some gray, sort of a wash here, to the um, birch trees to kind of indicate where I wanted more lines or more stripes and more shadowing on them. And I have sort of a white line painted on one side of it to show where the light is kind of hitting the trees. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, we're going to do a sort of gray wash um, on one side and add some striping to our trees. So probably going to want a larger brush for that. So clean off your larger brush. You can do it with a little brush too, but it'll take you longer. Um, if you have some real defined lines that you want to make, go ahead and use the little brush for that. So I'm going to 
just take off some of the water so it's still kind of moist. Um, and then I just want a little bit of the black and the white together. So I got a little bit of gray. So I'm mixing some gray here on my plate and then you can kind of try it out in different places and see how it looks. I'm just going to add to some of those stripes that I already have with the, the paper and maybe add a little bit more and then on the side to add some shadow. So, and if you've covered up some things with your other paint that you didn't want covered up then this is a good time to paint over those if you want to. And if your trees um, are not as bright as you would like them to be, you could also um, just do like a white wash over them. So just a faint, faint layer of white over the whole tree and leave some of the words visible. And if this is too opaque that you're putting on right now, um, you can add some more water to it and then it'll be a little bit lighter. And if it's too moist, then take a paper towel and you can kind of gather some of that moisture away. Just dab at it. And pick it right up. So now my brush feels a little bit too wet. <laughs> a little bit more black in there. It's looking good. You can put some stripes on the on the branches too. It's a little dark. If you don't want little, if you don't want actual stripes, you can just do some lines. Birch trees have lots of little lines. almost forgot about this one. This one didn't come all the way down to the bottom, so I'm just going to fudge it right there and with the paint and make it look like it did. I just got a little bit more of this to do. And if it looks like too much now, don't worry about it. You can come back with the white and go over some of this after we finish adding the, after we finish the initial go through, if you don't like how it looks, cover it up, add more white, add more black, whatever you think it needs. And definitely I think needs a little bit more white. So come back with some white here. Make some gray. Alright. Oops. Got a little bit of that orange. See I'm bringing in that white again. All right, and once you're satisfied, you can let that dry a little bit. Or if it seems like it's been drying the whole time, or it's been drying while you've been painting, then you can proceed on to the next step. If you like how this looks and you're happy with it, then and you don't want to add any more leaves or any more color to it, then you can just stop right here. Um, I'm going to add a little white stripe to accentuate my trees and show where the light's coming from. But I'm also going to add a little bit of green like I did in my example. You can see the green kind of down by the ground there. So if you want to do that, um, you can. You can add some green leaves if you want to, um, in which case maybe you want to use your fine brush. I'm going to use a larger brush and 
keep it kind of, I don't want to have a whole lot of paint on there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this green on and then just sprinkle it around the bottom here where these trees are. Like maybe there's some understory brush that's back there that's growing up around the trees and you can see it a little bit. Or maybe there's some lichen or moss growing on the trees too towards the bottom. I don't know. All kinds of possibilities. So you can add as much of that as you want to. I'm just doing it mostly at the bottom here. And if it's too dark, again, you can use your paper towel or whatnot to lift some of that paint off. You can even get it wet and that will take more of the paint off. Not sopping wet, I don't recommend that. Okay, so maybe a little bit more right over there. That looks pretty good to me. All right, so I'm ready to do the white outline. Since I want this to be kind of detailed, um, I'm going to use my fine brush. And I just want to do one side of the tree. So wherever that edge is, I'm going to come along down the edge and give that a nice white line. And this might take a little while because the brush is very small. And you don't, I would not recommend painting over the leaves like I did right there. Whoops. You can leave the leaves as they are. I just want to accentuate that edge. I'll go back and leaf my leaves out again. And you can also accentuate the branches. And if that looks kind of harsh, you can um, blend it in a little bit. It's gonna, maybe I won't have to go back over my leaves. I will just take that off right there. All right, that looks a little bit better. And we're gonna keep doing this for all of our trees. Making that white line and blending it in if we want to. You can start to see how they pop out a little bit better once they've got that bright white line. All right, so I'm going to finish mine, and then you finish yours, and then we'll meet back in just a little while. All right, so I finished mine. You can see all my little white lines, and I blended it all in. And I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Um, if I had a brighter yellow, I might go in and make a few really bright yellow leaves. But this is kind of a nice muted fall scene. So I'm going to let this dry, and then when I come back, I'm going to get out my Mod Podge and then paint over it so that it's all nicely sealed. So we will be back in just a little while. Final step, y'all. We're doing the Mod Podge. I have the glossy kind, so if you like a matte finish, use the matte variety. And I'm just going to paint over it like so until the whole thing is coated. Hopefully I'll be able to tell when I'm done. <laughs> Everything is dry now. You want to make sure that your uh, collage painting is completely dry before you do this step or you might smear your hard work around and that won't be pretty. So, yep, be sure everything is dry and then you too can finish off your project. I'm not going to make you watch all of this. Um, I will be done in just a second and I will show you what 
you find the Okay, I'm all finished Mod Podging, and things are still a little bit wet right now, um, so you can't see that it's going to be shiny, but um, once it is, then it will dry nice and clear and the colors will come through really nicely. So we are all finished. Congratulations, you made it. This project may have taken you a little while. So I hope you had a successful painting and collage session with me today, um, and that your birch trees turned out really beautiful. Uh, please join me again for our next Team Crafter Noon, and for more fun ideas, you can check out our website, www.huntmelibrary.org, or subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up on all of the things that we're doing at the library. See you next time. Bye-bye.